this is Janet from Basic Organization, and today is the final um, live in a series on paperwork that I was um, that I was doing for you, and so I wanted to talk about how to set up an actual file system for your archive paperwork. And um, I'm going to offer you um, at the end, if you want to comment or send me a message, um, I have print. I made up these um, things that you can use for file tabs, which I talked about um, in the last video. Um, they are already pre-made. You just could print them out and cut them um, along the lines. And if you don't have a label maker, you can use um, these. So um, there's several pages because I'm going to talk about how you structure a file system today. So um, I'm going to see if I can tilt this a little bit and show you. So I'm going to talk through this file system. This is like everything I could think of. You may think of something um, um, something else that you can add to this, but it, it, there are probably a lot of folders in here that you don't need um, because they just don't apply to you. Um, so you want a system that works for you. That's a lot of times that's what we're helping a client with. They've worked it with a system that they've purchased and it just doesn't seem to work for them. For for what they need. So I have two boxes like this, and that is probably all the paperwork you would ever keep, and this is if you're a paper person. It, it doesn't matter if, um, I mean, if you're a digital person and you save all your documentations digitally, that's fine. It was probably a good idea to set up a system on how you um, save your paper, but or save your documents, um, and you can do it similar to this, but if you're a paper person, here you go. Hi, Hazel, how are you? Um, so the first, um, the first portion of this is what I talked about in an earlier video, your active paperwork, your current paperwork. And we talked about that you're gonna need, so that's what the tab says over here on this side. This is how I would set them up. I put the tabs in the front of the Hain file folder, but you don't have to. Um, the topic kind of for the whole section I put on the side and then I put all the tabs for each folder in that section down the middle. It's easier than kind of jumping, looking for which tab, you're, if they're all in order. It's just like looking down the road to find them. So you're going to find um, that bills to pay, things, correspondence, I think I called it communication on the video before. So anything that you need to communicate about with anyone. You need to uh, make some phone calls or send some letters or whatever. Um, and there's a file folder for um, coupons and gift certificates, addresses and emails, um, the to-dos that you have. So if you have a project you know, you're working on and you just want to throw some information into a folder. Um, if you reconcile your receipts, um, there's a folder to just throw all your receipts, then there's a home for them and they're not scattered throughout your house or in your pocketbook or in your pants pocket and then you can't find them, right? Um, I have a folder for things to read. Um, if you're receiving magazines or whole or journals of some kind um, and you, you're gonna read the whole thing, that's great. But maybe you've picked up a brochure somewhere or, um, or maybe there is only one article in the newspaper that you wanna read, you can rip it out and throw it in here and then it's, uh, it's living in a home um, until you're ready to sit down and read, right? Um, and then I also have tabs for school and after school and projects and events and appointments and then the final one is things to file, right? Now these are, this, portion of the system is something that's going to live in your um, living space. This is paperwork that you need to look at quite often. So you could set up a system like this and it could live in a file box on your kitchen counter or it could live in a specific place in your home office. Um, if you uh, are, if you have a little desk in your family room or in your living room, this is the stuff that you need um, daily, weekly, one, monthly. Um, and when it becomes old and you don't need it anymore, you either trash it or you decide like, I'm gonna need this information in the future, so then I'm gonna put it in my file cabinet. 
or whatever kind of filing. I did talk about that in another video too. Sometimes uh, you're not a file cabinet person and that is fine. There are certainly other options. So we're gonna move on. The rest of it is what you would find in a file cabinet, right? So the mail comes in, you receive financial statements and you can put them um, right away. If you don't have to do anything with that piece of paper except file it, you can just throw it in the to file folder. When this folder gets full, maybe once a month or um, every other month, um, then you take it all to the file cabinet and do your filing. So in this financial section, there's gonna be a tab for a checking account, a tab for a savings account, a tab for credit cards, um, a, a tab for savings bonds or loans or your mortgage statement. Now you might have, say, you have more than one checking account or you have more than one credit card. That's where the manila folder can come in and you can put, you can have just a credit card hanging folder and then you can have manila folders inside for each credit card you have. Now if that gets too crowded, you can always make different um, separate hanging file folders for each account if you would like to. So then the next set of um, folders is your utilities. And um, the first one I called communication. Um, and that is, uh, oh, it's called cable and internet on here. So, and that's really what it is, your cable or your internet access, um, your electric bills, your gas bills, your HOA, if you have an HOA, your mobile phone, if you, uh, you know, everybody has a mobile phone these days, right? And a water bill. You may have other bills um, that you get um, monthly or whatever, and but you may not have an HOA or you, you know, what, whatever works for you, but this gives you the structure and then you can add and delete as you need. So this next section is um, for personal paperwork. And let me, uh, get my guide out. Now this is stuff that you're going to need to hang on to. Um, stuff like your utility bills, you don't really need to hang on to them very long and there's certainly um, places on the internet that you can find really good suggestions on how long you need to keep certain paperwork. But this personal section, you probably are keeping things longer. Um, you, you just have a folder for a birth certificate and then one labeled education, which might be um, where you would keep your diplomas or um, or certain maybe maybe information on classes you're taking now or you know you've signed up for the next semester that kind of thing right then um, you have a tab for employment and a resume um, you also have health a health tab a military service tab if that is for you um, a folder for your passports if you have a passport um, I've also got a folder in here for your pets. And again, if you have a couple of pets, you just put a manila folder inside for each pet. I would name them each pet, for each pet's name. Um, and then if you belong to a religious organization, if you need to keep paperwork for that, and then you get, you still, I think we still get social security um, information once a year, or if you're older and you're on social security, you get more information. Now these can be really customized for you because if you have um, several family members that you are managing, um, you might want uh, in the, the health folder, you might want a folder inside for each person, but it might be easier to just create a separate folder for each person and not have anything, just everything in that folder is for that person. Same with education, um, um, same with employment. It just, it just depends on what works for you. Once your file folder gets too full, you know you need to separate it out. Either clean it out or separate it out, right? Um, and so then I'm gonna to wanna to talk about the next set of tabs is health related. So again, I had a health one in the personal section, but maybe you have more people or more medical issues than that is gonna fit in one tab. So you could um, move that into its own section, right? So I have a folder for dental, medical, vision, EOBs, bills, 
because of course every time you go to the doctor you get an EOB and you get a bill right so you can separate those out and certainly makes them easier to find them when you need them um, if you have a lot of, say, chronic medical conditions, you may want a folder for the doctors you see most often. Um, so you can put all of the information for that specific um, uh, medical condition that, you're, that you want to focus on. So you could just pull out one folder and there you go. You got all the information you need. Um, the next set of, um, of folders is for investments. So we all get all of those paper investment uh, information that well, you'd never read um, and you know it just kills me because they kill trees so I'm very happy to, that I've signed up for to get all of that digitally so they're not just killing trees for information I never really sit down and read <coughs> but if you want to keep that information in a paper form have a section for investments um, so if you have an annuity a college fund um, <coughs> mutual fund real estate, retirement, <coughs> excuse me, and any other investments you have. So then I'm gonna move on to the second box. <coughs> excuse me. And this again is paperwork that you will need to keep for a period of time, but not forever. So we're gonna look at insurance. So you probably have auto insurance. You may have a boat, so you may have separate insurance for that. You may have vision, um, dental, vision, and health insurance paperwork. So see, your health insurance can stay in your insurance section, but the actual bills and the EOBs and the test results will all stay in your health section. Um, health, uh, medical paperwork is, is usually the hardest for people to deal with because they don't know, uh, you know, they don't, you need to separate it out so it makes it a little simpler to deal with and, and they're just challenged with, you know, how do I do that? Um, so if you also, if you have life insurance and, uh, Medicare or social security, um, and, um, and then any medical claims you have, you also want to keep a file of those. Um, so in the next section, we're going to do vehicles. So, um, you, your insurance for your vehicle would be in the insurance section, but do you, um, then, then you want a folder for your auto and you put manila folder inside for each auto you have. And then every time you buy new tires, you put the receipt in there. Every time you get the car worked on, you put the receipt in there. Because, you know, you everybody, I do the same thing. When was the last time I bought a set of tires? I don't remember, but I can go in here and find the receipt and I'll know exactly when and where I purchased them and how much I spent, what I bought and everything. So you'll keep that information. And again, when you sell that car, the whole folder can go. You no longer own the car. You, can, you don't have to keep that information anymore. So uh, there is a tab for if you own a boat or an RV as well, if, it, if you're so lucky that you can um, have that, wonderful. Now, the last section is for taxes. Oh, I wanna say the last section, but it's not the last section, sorry. Um, so I have a separate tab for property tax. I get those pieces of paper and they kind of, it's real easy to have your property tax um, paperwork kind of swim around because there's no place to put it. So just make a folder um, in order to keep that information and easy to find when you need it. Um, the next section is your taxes. So um, I have a small business, so I have a folder with my business expenses. If you don't have a business, you don't need that. Um, you do, um, everybody likes to donate to their um, charities of their choice or um, donate items to a thrift st charity thrift store. So when you get those donations, have a home um, where those receipts can live. This makes it much easier at tax time. You're not hunting around, they're all in a folder. So a lot of these tax folders throughout most of the year, I don't ever even go into them, right? Because um, you do, you may donate things or anything, but 
when it's tax time, if they're all together, boom, you're done. You know, you're, there's no hunting around. It saves you so much time. So um, I also have a folder in that section um, for any home improvements you have done, um, any legal and accounting, uh, any medical receipts that you want to deduct, uh, and your mortgage, so um, so you can deduct that, and um, any W-2s and 1099s that you get. So again, a lot of that information is going to show up in January or the beginning of February, um, and and um, so it's boom, boom, boom. You could even move those folders to the front of your drawer, so you can easily um, toss that stuff into its correct place. Um, if you have children that you can deduct um, any child care or school expenses for, um, there's a folder for that. Then the next section is legal. And let me move to my cheat sheet here. Okay, so if you, um, if you need this section, go ahead and create it. Maybe you don't have really a need for um, a legal file section for right now, but one day you might. So if you have any legal claims, go ahead and have a home that you can toss all of that paperwork in. Um, any death certificates, again, if you're an executor or, or, um, um, or you have someone who has passed, you, you'll need copies of death certificates for them. Um, any um, any paperwork for, to, towards your mortgage that's for legal, or um, you want to keep a copy of your power attorney, or your trust, or someone else's, or your will. Um, so it makes it super easy to, to, to find all these things. Now, if you've ever been divorced, you need to keep a copy of your divorce decree. Um, and if you have, if you own a home um, and you have a deed on it, you need to keep a copy of that. Um, if you have a living will, so you see that there's lots of options. Some of them may not apply to you, but some of them might, or you might have a little more. Um, if you have a marriage certificate, you want to hang on to that as well. So you see a lot of these folders could get really packed, the medical folders, um, maybe the auto folders, even the, the, your bill folders or your, or your investment statements, that kind of thing. They could get really packed, although a lot of that stuff you only receive once a month um, if you're still getting the paper mail. So really, you could probably keep, you know, 12 pieces of paper or 12 months worth of paper um, and but then some of them you you know if you're married you're only married to one one time once at once one at a time at least right so you're only gonna have one piece of paper in there but when you need a copy of your marriage certificate you don't want to have to spend hours hunting for it so have a home for it so um, this second to the last section is um, manuals and warranties. Um, a lot of my clients still want to save all of the manuals that they get from everything they purchase, every electronic, right? Every, every, everything they've purchased comes with some kind of documentation. Um, these days you can get pretty much all of it on the internet. All of the companies you've purchased from, you can go to their website, um, um, type in search for the the, the um, actual item that you own and it will have a PDF of the manual but people still like to keep them so as long as you have a home for them um, and it, because if you if you need that manual and you can't find it what what's the sense in keeping it right if you have no place to be able to find it quickly so if you want to create a section for manuals I would have um, electronics I would have a section called household um, because maybe you bought a rug or a lamp or um, a piece of furniture or something and you want to keep the receipt and, and you know the purchase information um, any personal property um, that you have purchased and uh, then I separate uh, yard and, and, and um, garage because there's usually a lot of stuff in the garage that you might want to keep um, 
you know, what what did you pay for your lawn mower? When did you buy it? Um, that kind of thing. So a uh, good idea to have just separated out from inside the house and outside the house um, for me. And then any receipts. Again, when any um, lar larger ticketed items, you want to hang on to the receipts um, in case you need them for insurance purposes. Um, you need to it's hard to remember, you know, when you bought your sofa and how much it cost you. So that's a good place to just, again, toss that information and if you ever need it, it's available. Now the last section, I only have one folder and it is called Old Taxes. Um, you do, and people always ask, uh, I'm, I'm surprised even today with the internet, that people are really unsure on how long they keep their taxes. So if, you, if they are your personal taxes, you only need to keep them for seven years. Now, I always tell people also there's a comfort level to that. A lot of people still don't want to get rid of them. That's fine. To me, you know, it's, it's personal what the, what the, most recent thing I've heard is you can, the IRS will accept uh, scanned documents. You don't need to have a paper copy anymore. Um, but you also, um, if you need, if you want to keep anything more uh, longer than seven years, you don't need to keep that, um, that supporting documentation. So you don't need to keep all your donation receipts. You don't need to keep any of that extra paperwork. You need to keep your actual tax filing documents um, at least seven years and, um, and with all its other documentation. But older than seven years, if you're comfortable with letting the rest go, keep just your tax document and that's all your, your filing document. But I would also suggest that your old tax paperwork doesn't have to live in amongst everything else. Get a file box. Um, you can buy a cardboard file box like this very inexpensively. You can put at least 10 years of, of tax paperwork in one of these boxes. If you have a garage um, or, um, or a basement that you can trust that it would be fairly safe, I would put all of it in there. Um, I'm a big fan of like a, man, a manila, a, ma a mailing envelope that I can throw all one years in, a, in an envelope, write the date on the front of the envelope, seal the envelope, and boom, the stuff is all together, and then I put it in a box and it lives in my basement. Um, if you don't have e even a storage space like the uh, top shelf in a closet, or the floor of a closet. It just you you most likely will never need that those pa that paper, and hopefully not. Uh, but if you do, you'll know where to find them. But it doesn't have to be in your way for the other 364 days of the year, right? Um, and so. That's it. I would love to hear um, some questions from you. So please post any comments. And if you would like um, a copy of these tabs that I had printed out, um, as you see, there are d definitely some empty spaces. So you can go ahead and make your own. But this is a Word document. So you could type them in even too if you wanted to look all nice and neat and fancy. Um, and it's a way of setting up a filing system that's just quick and easy. If you if you are someone who really hates filing, I would love to hear from you because this is more the traditional filing system. There are so many other ways to file your paperwork that make it easy to use, easy to find what you're looking for when you need it. Um, so again, comment and, I, and I'd, I'd love to have a chat with you. Um, I, you'd be surprised. It do, it's not that hard filing. You can do it. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.